So this will be podcast three. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, welcome to the podcast again. Matthew and I are going to talk about our beginnings in uh, wedding photography business and just kind of how we got started, what it was okay. like, and all that good stuff. Podcast so, number three. Yeah. Number so. Three. Yeah, uh, unless one of these gets cut, then maybe it'll be number two. But. <laughs> maybe number two. Yes, I think this is number three, though. Yeah, we'll see. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so, um, yeah, I know uh, we have very kind of different beginnings in photography. I was yeah. uh, in school when I when I started photography. I was going to school for graphic design, and you were working a, a corporate job. And Yeah. I yeah. accidentally fell in love with photography as a grown-up. Like, I didn't know anything about photography as a kid. I was never really interested in it. Or yeah, same anything. here. And, like, I got into it in, like, my 20s. <laughs> so, like, I I had already gotten a job. I went to, a, you know, I'd gotten a computer science degree, and I got a corporate job, and I was working there for a while. And um, my my wife, my now wife, uh, was my girlfriend at the time, and her sister was getting married. And she asked if I would take some pictures at some of the stuff around the wedding, like the uh, rehearsal dinner and stuff like that. And so I borrowed a camera from a guy at work, just saying, yes, of course, I'll do that. I just want to be helpful. And I borrowed a, ca a, a Canon camera from a guy at work, and I, I just kind of got hooked on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I borrowed it from him, and then, like, after the weekend was over, I asked him. I was like, hey, man, I really like this camera. Can I buy it from you? Do you use it a lot? And he was like, yeah, you can you can have it for 500 bucks. So, you know, I ran out, gave him 500 bucks with ATM yeah, on And you just got break. addicted. You were just... Yeah, I was just hooked. I started, like, yeah. calling in sick to work so I could stay home and, like, geek out on cameras all the time. Like, I was yeah. just obsessed with it. <clears throat> and, like... I kind of got to a point where I decided I had to leave my corporate job and go start my own photography business and just do this full time. Yeah. Like, cause there's nothing else. It was else like all was you satisfying. could think about, right? That's all yeah, it was, it was like me. a total yeah. obsession. Like nothing else was going to work. <laughs> that was it. This is what I'm doing and nothing's stopping it, you know? Yeah. And I just became obsessed with photography. And so, yeah, I ended up leaving my comfy corporate America job and yeah. starting my own business and becoming an artist and learning a whole bunch of stuff. And it's been a whirlwind. And I, I think that it's it's been fantastic. And uh, how did you get? Done. Yeah, so um, I uh, started going to college when I was 19, I believe. Um, took a couple of years off and then um, wanted to, to go to school. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to study at the time. And I just kind of fell into it. So um, I wanted to take a, a class that was... Uh, you know, pretty, pretty, maybe an easy A. So I, I was like, oh, photography. And I'd never yeah, actually absolutely. done any, any photography prior yeah. to that. So I'd never, I always thought photography was kind of a weird thing. Like I didn't really understand it. I thought people who did photography <laughs> were kind of nerdy and like, yeah, they are a little weird. nerdy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> a little yeah. strange. Yeah. It's true though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, but uh, you know, I also knew that I like doing like artsy stuff yeah. and um, I wanted to be an artist of some sort. And um, yeah, I just took this black and white film course and I just like became like extremely addicted to it. I was staying uh, longer hours <laughs> in the dark room than everybody else. And it was just kind of a surprise to me. I didn't realize that I'd like it. And, you know, my, my teacher um, at the time was like looking at my pictures and I could tell my pictures were better than everybody else's. Like I just kind of had an eye for this stuff. Um, yeah, I've always been interested in, in like design and art and stuff. So I just, um, you know, started from there. And then, you know, by the time um, I was like 24 in college, I had like a start to my business and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. You know, I was going to school for graphic design and I was like, you know what? Like, I think I have a, a good start. I think I made like, I made about uh, $20,000 with, with photography um, that last year I was in school and I was like, okay, like this isn't maybe enough to live, but you know, I'm like, cool, like not, you know, buying the, the fancy stuff. But it's making stuff. me money, yeah, you know, like yeah. it's making me money doing what I yeah. love all the time, which was right. like, I remember yeah. that was the same for me. Like I had the corporate job and I was making a lot of money, so I had a lot of money saved up. So like when I left, yeah. it wasn't so scary for me. And I, but I remember just being obsessed with it all the time. Yeah. Like nothing could stop that like yearning to do it and the, that, how happy I'd get from people paying me <laughs> to take their pictures. It was so cool. It was like, wow, you, yeah. you like my work that much. And like, unlike you, like I went for a computer, like computer science, like I have like math mind kind of nerd kind of stuff. So like, I never knew I had like that kind of artistic part. So yeah. when I started making these pictures and people were like, but, oh, but you also your did pictures it. are yeah. great. Yeah, I, I don't it think It really kind of made yeah. me feel you, you, like yeah you played in, in bands uh when yeah you no younger, i was like, definitely you... always into music yeah. and stuff but i never had like something but i wasn't that great in a band you know <laughs> it, was, it was more to yeah. impress the ladies when you're a young guy you know what i mean it wasn't like something i was very good yeah. at but like photography man it was like the same with you it was like whoa 
I'm really good at this. Like, this is something I didn't know what I was really good at that I yeah. want to do more yeah. and more of. And yeah, and I, I guess at, at this point, an obsession. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know, can't just, stop. Yeah, it was like I was like chasing the the next photo, and yeah. I just wanted to make you, you know the better, best photo. Better. You know, you know what what lens can I get at the time was my mindset. Yeah, you know, to make I, this uh, better, do, or what can I do? Or you know, what time of day or what what time of year? Yeah, or yeah what it was like this really. Where's the light coming yeah, from? Yeah, it was like this puzzle that I was just trying to piece together. Yeah. You know, when I was yeah. like first starting out, it was so fun. But uh, yeah, practically. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to title this uh, podcast is like how to start a, a, a photography business or <laughs> to start to uh, bi- like Make a photography money business. Make with your camera. Something like that. So uh, yeah. yeah, practically I'd say um, beginning stages, once you start making a little bit of money, you definitely need to... Uh, to get an LLC or a yeah, sole proprietorship. It's which, better actually to start doing these kinds of things, like get yeah. your business started before you start. I mean, you need gear, but you don't need gear. Like you need, if you're looking to make money, like you need these business essentials that Nick's talking about. You definitely need your LLC and to start Yeah, Yeah, so um, talk to somebody who is more experienced uh, in this stuff than us, but uh, get all your business right. Um, right. Maybe get an accountant, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, that's the first thing I did because like yeah. – I am not good at that kind of math yeah, and here. accountability. <laughs> so like, you know, yeah. I, uh, I remember once upon a time reading something in a book that said you should hire people to do the things you hate. Mm. And so like, I was like, I don't have tons of money, but I hate doing accounting. So I'm going to go find somebody who can do this stuff. Yeah. But then uh, from there, you know, the, the big part is, is the website and your yeah. website should definitely be specialized. Um, you need to keep in mind that you're, um, you're selling a product to people and if you have like too many things on the website right. if you're shooting dogs yeah you don't want to show off every picture you want you want to get really <laughs> niche here yeah yeah so in, in the design world we always um, you know we talk about like uh, designing something to, to sell and like we talk about archetypes a lot and like you know so you have to like an archetype of a customer get that in your head think about like what your customer is going to be like and then choose the pictures you want to show on your website from there. So if you wanted to shoot weddings, for example, which is easy for us to talk about because we're both wedding right. photographers, um, you obviously would not want anything but wedding imagery on there. You don't want any um, right. anything else but that. You want uh, people yeah. to know that that's what your passion is Especially about. if it's someone like a bride who's like been planning this big day for a year. She wants to know that the person she's hiring focuses on what she's hiring for. Yeah. So like you really want to get really specific. Like if yeah. you do dog photography, you don't want to show off a bunch of pictures of, of people of, or hamsters. Yeah. Or exactly. <laughs> you want to be pinpointed to what that demographics yeah. looking People for. are a lot more, more likely to buy something from you if they know that you specialize in one area. Right. And if you can really professional. Yeah. That's the biggest mistake I see on really so many understand. photographers websites. So Absolutely. yeah, when I'm looking for a second photographer or associate photographers or something, um, the, the biggest uh, thing I constantly run into is just over and over, um, you know, people, uh, putting too much work on their website yeah, that's not relevant to, to a customer. Less general, get more yeah. specific. And you can even um, dive a little bit e- deeper into thinking about your customer archetype. You can think about, oh, like what would these people uh, like like for a logo? What's going right. to make them like identify to your brand? Right, exactly. Um, yeah, what what do stuff. you like aesthetically that, that helps explain you through this brand? As yeah. Well? Like you want to yeah. make sure it, it, it shows off your personality and who you are. But yeah, I feel like when you're getting started, a lot of that when stuff you started, is, you can't think about is just so, what you like so, as much. Yeah, you have to really try to build something that's going to get eyes on it and try to try to reel in some customers and start yeah. making some money and get a yeah. name for yourself. Yeah, I feel like the the further um, you, you're at it and you're able to do the same process over and over and um, get your style down more, then you can kind of niche it out even more. And then right. like maybe include... yeah, there's a lot of subgenres even in weddings, like oh, for the sure. whimsical wedding photographer yeah. or the adventure moody, moody, or the moody whatever. or the uh, yeah. classical type. Like there's a lot of yeah. different archetypes in the niches. So you definitely yeah. want to make sure that you're. Yeah, really if your passion is, is like hiking, then uh, incorporate yeah. that into your business. Yeah. Like brides who love the outdoors yeah. or yeah. trying to Fine. find. You know, if you're doing commercial photography for those kinds of people, try to show them how you can get to the top of a mountain and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and then you can write articles about um, the top, uh, you know, five mountains in Colorado to get married on and stuff like that. So, just make more relevant con- uh, content for your for your uh, targeted audience. So, if you know that um, you know you have this passion for hiking, then it's gonna it's gonna work out better in the long run for you if you're right. uh, photographing the couples that you're passionate about, also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like when you meet them, you're already gonna have like common <clears throat> common things to talk about. You both like to hike, and you both probably been to yeah, a lot of the you're same gonna have places. a better uh, customer experience. Yeah, and you're just gonna seem 
like a, a much better, easier person to be around. So I think that's definitely important. But I also think that like, so you want to get your website right. You want to get all that legal stuff and get your, your company formed and stuff. But then you need to figure out how to get the clients. And I feel like that's probably the trickiest part of the whole game. It's like all of us are doing pictures all the time and all of us are pretty good but how do you reel in people so that they trust you and they want you to be their photographer and stuff like that so yeah. that's where the marketing comes into place where you there's a lot of different ways to do it like i know there's a lot of people that run referral businesses where like they might know somebody in an industry like and they can yeah. come do like yeah, student pictures over and over yeah and over or again. connecting with like wedding planners or if, uh, you could, like if you're doing weddings you can connect with people like yeah. that or yeah, if you're a really outgoing person you could go to bridal shows and yeah um, exactly if you were comfortable with that you could go to bridal shows or if like maybe you were more tech savvy you could do the google ads and maybe you're not trying to find brides but you're trying to like sell adventure photography to somebody who's coming to your like alaska or something so yeah. you could sell them via the internet so you could look for people yeah. who are are have those kinds of uh, uh, traits in facebook and advertise to them so you have to find ways to to get your client because if you don't have a client you know yeah. you're not making any money yeah. you don't really have I'd a say, business you have to, yeah like, like the first mistake uh which we mentioned was just having too much work in your portfolio not niching down to a client that you're going to enjoy working with and then uh secondly i would say uh the second problem you run into a lot is um, a lot of photographers are just shooting, shooting, shooting tons of work and they're just expecting people to come to them. So um, I know right. I've heard some other photographers say that um, they've just sat around waiting for jobs to come to them and you can't do that, whether yeah, that's like bri bridal yeah. shows, online advertising <laughs> or whatever uh, your thing is, maybe your thing is, is you know a lot of uh, wedding planners or you're connected with the church. You got to be getting uh, your eyes on uh, your, their eyes on your work somehow. So right. you can't just sit there, twiddle your thumbs and just wait for I people say to show that, up. I'd say that aside from post-production, most of my time and <clears throat> effort is spent on these very efforts trying to get people to the website. Oh yeah. Yeah. Via like, social media, via yeah yeah uh, uh, via google via perfect, word yeah. of mouth via you know all yeah these connecting with avenues. venues uh connecting venues, with the wedding planners wedding planners yeah. yeah all that kind of stuff we've, <laughs> i've had more than one instance where we've gone and pitched a room full of wedding planners on why they should use us for their photographer and that old school tactic sometimes works it just kind of depends on your market and and who you are like some people are better at that sort of thing and yeah. while other people are better at figuring out you know demographics in google or something so kind of figure out what your strengths yeah. are and, and try to apply that all right, and so um, just to help you out with all your portfolios here, real quick, uh, don't include any out of focus images unless it's uh, unless you're artsy and you know what you're doing and um, you kind of have like a wobby sobby thing going on and you're advanced enough to know know that. Um, don't include. <clears throat> I'd say, well, I mean, most of all, like when you're starting out, you're trying to make the weddings that you're shooting um, look as good as possible. So. Focus right. in on just making the, these weddings that you're, you know, you're just getting in there. You're, you're not working probably the most expensive venues. You're not working the most extravagant weddings. So you really got to find a way just to make the, these couples look their very, very best and um, just do, do make the most of every single wedding that you're shooting for sure. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> it's easy yeah. to kind of get frustrated at the yeah, beginning too because like yeah. you're not getting a lot of business because if you're especially if you're starting a wedding photography business like yeah a lot of other kinds of businesses you start and you start getting business right away and you're doing it but with wedding photography like most people book yeah. you like <laughs> nine months a year before their wedding so you get booked some jobs but then you don't actually have anything to do for a year so yeah. like when you get first started in wedding photography it's definitely worth knowing that yeah. it's kind of a longer <clears throat> run oh, yeah. and you're and, kind um, of in it for yeah. seasons and, and i think a misconception in sort of some communities is that uh you shouldn't work for free at all but if you're building up a portfolio yeah um yeah if you could get like a good styled shoot that could help your portfolio or get your name known to more, more yeah. local vendors that could refer you it's, it's, it might be worth it especially if you're not doing anything else <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So if you're working a job where you have a little bit of extra time and you have a passion for wedding photography, then maybe go shoot your friend's wedding. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, the good, for yeah, cheap exactly. or free. Or free, um, yeah. Because that'll get you to, um, you know, you book one one job off those, then, you know, boom, it's worth, boom, it. It's worth it, you know. Yeah. I know when I was starting out, um, you know, it seemed like like a lot of money when, when I got into it. Yeah. And so you book one of those jobs, then, you know, you're... You're, you're making it and you're showing progress. And, and I think that's why a lot of uh, photographers that run their own <laughs> businesses get into weddings. Like there's a lot of 
more money in it per job. You can make a, a reasonable living off of wedding photography yeah. if you can book enough of them. But I think that that's probably a whole other subject. Oh, for sure. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, um, if I was getting into headshot photography, I think that's really easy. You could um, just find some friends on Instagram or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah just... Uh, you could even go on to like something like Model Mayhem or Facebook uh, model groups and find people that were would be attractive that would come yeah. out and but, get but again, headshots. But again, you're building a portfolio in order to get to get paid and you're uh, building towards sort of a, a customer, like a really specific thing towards a customer. So it's, it's really intentional when yeah, you do so work it's, for free. Yeah, th that work is free, mm -hmm. but it's free with a purpose. Like you're doing these things to get to where you're trying to get to and without having that portfolio like yeah. just waiting around for people to come to you you might not get started you might <laughs> yeah you might just spin your wheels and never yeah, really you might just get be going. Wa yeah watching this video over and over or something right, and then... exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's good to, to to get out there and do stuff even if at, at first it's free because then at least you're building a portfolio and you're starting to be able to share something that you can yeah that but, you can eventually you can charge for and so yeah yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I'd say you know, like headshots would be a hard market to be kind of to be in. You know, you uh, probably... uh, definitely if it was going to be like your your main bread winning activity. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I feel like if if you were a photographer who had like maybe a full time job as a barista or you did something else like that, you could do that and supplement your income and make some extra side money. But like as a full time yeah. job, a head, headshot business yeah, is in, pretty, pretty hard in a yeah. smaller town. If you lived in New York or L A or maybe Chicago. One of these bigger <laughs> hubs in the U.S. Yeah, you, with you lots could, of people uh, trying to you'd get You'd probably, that yeah, you'd so. probably have a better chance. But if you're in a smaller town that's not Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood kind of place, then yeah. you're probably not gonna not gonna make a ton of money there, <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. You might do pretty good down in uh, Orlando. Orlando, why? Miami. There's a lot of people there at Disneyland who want to be stars. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, but for us, yeah, we're we, we're both wedding photographers, primarily based in in Denver. Yeah. And for us, that's how we kind of got our start. And I feel like um, maybe something else to touch on is gear. Maybe some of the equipment that we use to get started. Some of the mistakes we oh, made yeah. in, in gear along the way. We got a few moments to talk about. Yeah. Some stuff um, like that. Uh, yeah. So uh, when I was first starting, <clears throat> the first wedding I shot was with the five D Mark II and a fifty millimeter one point two. <laughs> dude dream yeah. kit <clears throat> and then a, a, yeah and then a flash so so the first <clears throat> wedding that i ever shot i shot on a rebel <laughs> with a uh with the 50 millimeter 1.4 that was uh you know and that was an 80 yeah so it was like basically an 80 1.4 but we booked it my wife and i booked it via craigslist and we charged 250 dollars and it was basically just to get the pictures, more or less. But the thing is, with wedding wedding photography, if you hire, if you get hired to do a wedding for two hundred fifty dollars, then the wedding is very inexpensive. So the pictures that you end up with look very cheap. So you have to like build on that and climb and climb and climb. And I guess um, for that first setup, that was probably okay. For I mean, that was a crop camera with a. Yeah, when, when you're starting out, you, you don't need that much gear, and then yeah. um, I mean that whole system maybe cost me five hundred dollars yeah. at the time. And but then I slowly would, as we do more weddings and make more money, we'd move yeah. up, and over time we ended up with the five D two with a. But it's easy to make a lot of mistakes and buy things that are maybe too expensive at yeah. the time. But but yeah, when you're in the beginning stages of your uh, your career, um, you don't need like the most gear or anything. No, totally no. not. And I I think that if you're getting into <laughs> weddings, it's probably advantageous to look into getting a couple fast primes because you just kind of need the low light capabilities of them even with the higher iso capabilities of cameras you still yeah. need there's a lot of times that i shoot pretty wide open on my lenses where i just need that extra bit or yeah. i just like the look so <clears> I, you know i just thought, i just thought of this a good a good rule of thumb would be um you know maybe uh get a price in your head that you're trying to work up to like maybe it's two thousand dollars or whatever yeah like that's your kit you're like you're gonna have a two thousand dollar kit <clears> yeah like, so what then, would my two thousand dollar dream kit be yeah, and then this so until you book, lenses. yeah, yeah. And until you uh, book that first job, then you're shooting um, just for that first job, basically. Right, I think, and then yeah, yeah it's pretty much what I do. And, yeah, so my can build uh, up your kit. Yeah, you can buy a you know at the time I bought like a used uh, 5D Mark II used uh, lens around two thousand dollars, and and that's that was, a great thing to also look into. Like if you can buy stuff on the used <clears> market, you could save a lot of money, especially with lenses. Yeah. I feel like lenses kind of. They just, they're they're just gonna the get same. thrown around at a wedding too. Yeah, so. and they're gonna get bounced around in, on your own. So like buying used lenses is rarely a yeah. concern, but buying used cameras, it's you can, it, that can be trickier because like a camera could get used up. So you definitely want to like 
have pictures of it maybe if they have a box maybe then maybe yeah. consider buying it but like you, you want to get the shutter count that's the you, that's the thing and people yeah. can lie about that so it's hard to know if they're being totally well, you, honest on you, some of the yeah. cameras but some of the cameras they can send you screenshots and yeah so can, but you can always, you can uh, check it when you get home do a little bit of research right. and um, make sure it has a good return policy if you buy it off, buy it off eBay or something yeah. and just make sure you double check the, the shutter count so um, most... and also kind of look at the pictures of the body because if the body's in pretty good shape and the screen's in pretty good shape then it was probably babied a lot. It probably wasn't used a yeah, lot. Yeah, a lot it's of people saw used gear that was just sitting there. Barely around. ever used. Yeah. So, like, if you were lucky enough to get a camera like that and the user is like, oh, I bought this camera, sat on a shelf for six months, I'm just selling it because I don't use it at all, that's probably a great camera to buy because it's yeah. probably still then, a new like, you know? Yeah, I, I think another uh, one valuable thing that I never did, um, I just kind of jumped straight into things, but um, would be to kind of uh, maybe. Uh, second shoot for a photographer for an extended oh, amount totally, of time. Oh, totally, yeah. If yeah. you shoot for a second yeah. for a little while and, or and even so, as a third. Like we yeah. have some shooters that shoot with us as thirds that are just trying to learn like where to get started and what gear to buy and like mm -hmm. where to stand on wedding day <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah. Like where to where to be and what shots to get. And like if you can learn from another photographer, like you, yeah. can, you can gain a lot of insight right away on what not to buy and what to buy and save yourself a, oh, for sure. a lot of money and equipment alone, not, uh, let alone all the knowledge you can learn from. Yeah. marketing and websiting and all that yeah. kind of stuff yeah so um yeah figure out what what you can uh provide a, a photographer and like maybe you could you'd be willing to do something for free or um <clears throat> just figure out what what type of value you could provide because um it, i get a lot of emails from seconds and stuff and they're always kind of um well a lot of them are just talking about what gear they have what you know you know what 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 you know, it's kind of all about them a lot of the time, but <clears throat> an email that definitely pops out to me is one saying like, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to, yeah, do I want to um, help you. I, I want to, yeah, I want to progress. Like, yeah. I'll... Yeah. And if you have a passion for photography, you should be willing to do, do some of that stuff and it should right. be fun and exciting. So. And I know like I'm the same way. Like if I look at, if we're looking <clears throat> to hire uh, additional photographers to help out, if we're looking for seconds, yeah. Uh, we always ask for the gear list because we want to know how serious they are about photography and stuff. But oftentimes, people with the with the most gear are the less interested in really learning. So, like if you if if you're really just getting started in photography and you're trying to figure yeah. out where to go, I mean, yeah, and, and try to shoot for a couple the, yeah. different photographers so you can get a couple perspectives yeah. on how it works I mean, in your um, time. yeah, I shot uh, I've second shot three weddings and. Um, I'd say two of those was for a, a photographer whose uh, style I found out really didn't resonate with me. So, um, you know, it's also a great way to be like, oh, I like so how So maybe you didn't this. learn as much about the aesthetics and the, their style and stuff, but maybe you still picked up some business tactics or some yeah yeah or actually no i was just i was thinking in my head like this is not how i want to do things <laughs> <laughs> not so, to run my business yeah Don't so, do it like so it taught me kind of like what not to do yeah, kind of you <laughs> it was like the complete opposite could... yeah opposite well i mean that's also a great learning about. experience sometimes yeah, that's the best yeah. learning experience you know? <laughs> for sure <laughs> but i think all in all like over the time like having a yeah. successful photography business it really has made my life pleasant like i really enjoy being a wedding photographer i really enjoy using my camera all the time and just thinking about photography all the time and it being making enough money to survive with it kind of warrants my obsession you know what i mean it makes it okay mm -hmm. to be this crazy obsessed <laughs> about cameras and pictures and photography all the time because yeah. it pays it think, pays the bills yeah. keeps food well, on the table you know yeah i mean i think um owning your own business or being a sole proprietor entrepreneur uh anything like that you're basically um you know uh you're working for yourself and um, if you're somebody who who likes uh, to have that kind of responsibility and you know yes you really need to be structured and you really have to have like some sort of yeah plan for for moving but, forward or you can really get stuck so if you're not the self-motivating type then it could be difficult yeah but but yeah it's it's um you know owning your own business no matter what it is or um you know just being an entrepreneur in general is kind of like to me it's kind of like like the apex of work so it's like um well, like, you know, you get to get a dictate what what you're doing. You get to uh, work how you want to. You get to, um, you know, set your own schedule. And so, right. yeah. And um, I think, um, yeah. Assuming just, you are successful. Assuming you're successful. <laughs> exactly. Right. As long as you're, yeah. you're, you're making and it, it work. It depends on what you need to. So, like, um, figure out, like, like, what you need and then calculate how many jobs it's going to take to right. get you to. Exactly. Yeah. You really need to figure out what, what yeah. you need and then you need to figure out a plan yeah. on how you're going to get there. 
Yeah. Every year. <laughs> yeah. And some years are better than other years. That's the other thing is like you need to kind of yeah. have some sort of contingency plan for the years where you're just not making enough money because there's years where you don't do as well as other years. And then there's years where you have so much money. You're like, woohoo, I'm going to buy a bunch of extra stuff I don't need. And then the next season you're like, oh, maybe I did, shouldn't have bought that camera. Maybe I didn't need this. Maybe I should have done that. So like it's always smart when you have some money to put it away and oh, get for ready because sure. it's kind of a – it can be a bit of a roller coaster ride, yeah, and, and, and make business. sure you're saving up that twenty five percent for taxes. <laughs> yeah, don't um, forget about the man. To 30. The man wants his money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, if, and if you're just starting out, you got the the LLC, and um, you're making um, a little yeah. bit of money, then you need to start planning for for taxes too. So, right. don't just uh, take that money and go spend it. So, yeah, I know. If you're gonna spend that money on something, spend it on an accountant. Yes, yes, for yeah, sure. Get an accountant so you don't have to think about those numbers. Yes, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Anyway, so that is uh, wraps up our podcast for, yeah for today podcast yeah, so, number three so if you guys have any other questions about uh, photography business in general leave them down in the comments we will eventually get back to answering those i'm not sure um you know i'll probably uh, check them out here in a couple of days but uh yeah go ahead and leave a comment down below we'll be happy to answer um any other uh, business related questions so don't forget to oh and also uh don't forget to like and subscribe oh, and and also if you think this is something that's interesting and you'd like to know more about the business of photography and you think it'd be worthwhile for us to make more content like this, let us know and we will definitely yeah. consider.